confidence game. It's all about confidence, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a day. Oh. <laughs> That's her being six foot four helps. Whoa! Oh, Yo, is, that, yeah, is that Garrett Chan from Sports Talk? Yeah. Shout out Sports Talk, let's go. Yeah. All right, so we were just at the Earth Day event where I got a free t-shirt. I also got a free cup. And um, yeah, I'm just happy that we got to experience that. Now we're over here at Tyler Hall where we're gonna see people's sculptures that they created be poured in molten iron. Sa save the planet, you know? <laughs> we need to protect the planet, you know? Uh, that's why I got, they gave out free cups, you know, with um, the cool straws, uh, reusable sustainability. <laughs> but yeah, let's just go check it out. Uh, they're dressed like the guys from Monsters, Inc. Yeah. <laughs> 23 19. This is Professor Bush's metals class, and we're melting down a bunch of iron in a huge furnace. And we all made a bunch of molds from previous years and some of the Oswego High School stuff. And we're just uh, breaking up metal, throwing it in, melting it, and then uh, casting it all out. So it's also just a bunch of stuff that he found uh, from uh, a couple years back that uh, didn't get finished up. So we just decided, hey, why not? And we're all just finishing it all up today. I would put a grilled cheese in there. Yeah, so as you can see, we got some graphic art right here. Um, this is the best part of this piece, I would say. So, you know, cans, cans is all right. Bev's, of course, is great. This is, this is, this is home. This is, this is uh, Jason's here to uh, make world peace one one zone at a time. Hi, I'm Olivia Myers, and this is my BFA exhibition space. So I'll be talking about my two uh, photographs right here, Dreamscape 1 and Dreamscape 2. So how I made Dreamscape 1 and 2 is that I went to Fairhaven here in Oswego County, and I took pictures of the night sky, so I did a little bit of astrophotography. And then how I added the planets is textures online that match the color to the image and turn them into a circle and then edited them to make sure that they look somewhat surreal surrealism surrealism photograph <laughs>
Welcome in to the crispy and brisk shores of Lake Ontario for an early season Suniac Conference matchup between the Fredonia Blue Devils and the Oswego State Lakers right here on WTOP 10. Hello everyone, Thomas Turgeon with you alongside Luke Rosenthal. And Luke, it's only the second Suniac matchup for the Lakers so far this season, but an early start is what Oswego needs to start off the year. Oh, absolutely. This Oswego team is one that just last season went 5-4 and four in conference, so looking at some of these Suniac conference matchups, it's important to get momentum early on. Last season they were a little bit stagnant. It was one loss, one win, and sort of back and forth like that. You want to keep your momentum, keep it going for the rest of the season, and hopefully uh, look into the playoffs looking strong. And then these teams both have a lot of depth on their roster. Two of the players they are playing today, recognized by the Suniac with Cela Wiley and Sidney Buchko as the women's lacrosse offensive and defensive player of the week. Cela Wiley, been fantastic for this Lakers team. Fantastic, not just this season, but all, pretty much her entire career has 23 goals in the season, 14 assists. She's only nine goals away from 100 goals on the season, or in her career, excuse me. She'd be the 14th player in this program history to do so. And then Buchko, like you said, has been incredible for this Blue Devils squad. She has 19 draw controls, five ground balls, two caused turnovers just in the last two games. She's been outstanding, one of the leaders on this team for sure. Buchko been very good for the Fredonia Blue Devils, the Macedon New York native with 16 goals already in nine games, nine assists and 25 points in the nine games so far. However, Fredonia currently sitting at 5-4 and four and 0-1 and in the conference and losers of two in a row being Oneonta and Madai, Oneonta a conference opponent and they couldn't really get any offense going. Let's see how they do here as they'll get underway here on the faceoff. It's going to be Buchko and Quirk on the draw for Oswego State. Buchko in the blue and white for the Fredonia Blue Devils in lacrosse action underway here at the Laker Turf on this Wednesday afternoon, and it's Quirk dishing it off over for Smith as she'll bring it across and bring it in the offensive zone. Smith bringing it into the corner as she's lightly contested by Vukosic and brings it around over for Lembo. Back to the point is Wiley. Wiley for Quirk. Back across for McNally. Back down low, across side, down for Smith. Swigo looking to work things around a little bit quicker compared to how they did against New Paltz to open up today's contest as it brings it back up to the point for Quirk. Dishing it back over for Fierro. Up to the point is Wiley. The leading goal scorer for the Lakers. Wiley on the cutback. Dishes it back off for Fierro. She's pressured by two Fredonia Blue Devils out in front. Looks to send it over as it bounces off the turf. Back for Quirk. Over for McNally. 55 remaining on the possession clock for Oswego State. Smith behind the net now for Lembo. As three Oswego State Lakers at the top of the point being Wiley, Fierro, and McNally. There as Lembo rips one in to open up the scoring. A one to nothing game. For Oswego State, it's Isabella Lembo taking the lead early for the Lakers, her 23rd on the season so far, and the Lakers strike early. Starting off early and hot, these Lakers are, and it only takes that one cutter, that one cut, to really get into the shark tank there. That was one of my keys to the game, is attacking the middle of the field right in front of the goalie there. She gets it in, gets it behind goal, gets the first point of this game, just a minute and change in. Minute 14 into today's contest so far. The Lakers already taking a lead for Oswego State against Fredonia today. Only a minute 14 in. They already got the lead. Fredonia team that Oswego has had the better hand of last year. A absolute gunslinging affair between the Lakers and the Blue Devils. Oswego State routing the Blue Devils last season. Cela Wiley getting five goals and an assist in that game. Shea McConnell as well getting the very same as they look to try and get a quick jump start here on the Blue Devils early as it's brought back across. It's Fierro. Your goal scored by number two, Isabella Lembo. Fierro down for Lembo. Goal came on assisted and fed out in front and Shea McConnell is able to bury it. Um, Shea McConnell just lulling her defender to sleep there with a the nice cut. Defender didn't notice her, gets a step behind her. She's wide open for the easy goal. A quick bang, bang play right off the draw. Brought it right back in, and McConnell is able to find the tally to take it a 2 to nothing lead for Oswego. Now, McConnell getting another goal this season on her total. Now her 19th for number 12 in white, her 72nd 
in her Oswego State career for the senior as a minute 30 in, Oswego's got a quick 2 to nothing lead against Fredonia. Not the start you want for the Blue Devils looking to snap a two-game skid. Absolutely not, but you like to see that out of Oswego, them switching up their offense a little bit. Usually they like to get down the field, like to settle in, just pass the ball around and find the open guys, but they could turn it on in an instant of a second, and that's exactly what they did right there. As the Lakers win the draw, but it's a little bit of a foul there, and Oswego will retain possession. It'll be Wiley carrying across center field. Sends one over for McConnell. Down low for Lembo. We'll take the pause and bring it right back down low. It's Fierro. Her and Smith will trade spots and brought back up to the top. McNally across back now for Quirk and center. Over to Wiley to the left-hand side. Down low for McConnell as she'll send it right back for Wiley. Right back now for Julia Quirk as she drops it off for Wiley on the cutback. Wiley driving towards center, lets one fly, and that one goes high over the goal. The first one to it will be Smith. Oswego State will retain possession with 50 seconds remaining on the possession clock. Lembo with a pause as she gets contested, looking to drive towards goal on the cut spin and into the slot, and it's taken away by the Blue Devils. It'll be Brown as it's dished back off for Booth. Excuse me, Carr. And Fredonia will take possession. Lembo was looking for a little too much there. Went to that shark tank like I alluded to earlier and got bit. She went and tried, tried to go in between four defenders there. Lost the ball. Got the turnover. This is a good start for uh, for Fredonia to potentially do something here. Going a player up now. And Fredonia currently on the man up, as you said, Luke. And... They need some offense. They've had plenty of it in their first nine games. Currently ranked first in goals scored in the SUNYAC with 127. However, they are also ranked ninth in goals against with 98. So not the ideal offense to defense ratio you're looking for, but they'll try and move things up here with Vukosic. Vukosic trying to send it to the left side for Gariglia. Back north. For Decola, it's Bra over to the far side now for McGowan. As Fredonia will bring it in and across. Now behind the net now for the Blue Devils is it's Woods. Pressured by Cody. Woods on the pause, looking to send it towards center as she's contested by Russian. And the shot that goes in, and Woods cuts the lead down to one. As Fredonia now trails 2-1, to one. Aaron Woods, the senior, with her 36th goal so far this season for the Fredonia Blue Devils. Shot it in the perfect spot right behind Kamai. Kamai over to the left side of the goal there on the far side when you look at it, and you want to shoot to her left there, and that's exactly what she did. Bottom left, bottom cheddar, makes it a 2-1 ball game. Just a costly foul there by Lembo to create a 2-1 game for Oswego State as they currently trail by one now looking to get that lead back. They were up by two. Lembo draws the foul, and now they're back down to a one-goal game. Yeah, and fouls like that are going to be the difference maker in this one because these are two really high-scoring teams. These are two really good teams in the Sudiac so far this season. So things like that, it's going to result in goals for the opponent. 11:39 remaining here in this first quarter of play as... The draw is won by Buchko as she'll take possession for the Fredonia Blue Devils as it's Buchko pressured by Smith. Trying to get on the cut back, but pressured by McConnell and relentless and consistent pressure causes the turnover there and it's scooped right back up by Lembo. A two on three the other way. She's got McConnell to the left-hand side, but instead leaves it off for Fierro. So we have a stoppage of play here, a little bit of a... Quick stoppage, 11-16 remaining. Going to reset the shot clock here to 90. As it'll be Fierro retaining possession for Oswego State. And they got the shot clock now set at 76 for Oswego as they'll start things off back yet again. It's Smith behind the net now for Lembo. Lembo across for McConnell. Back up to the point is Wiley. Over for Quirk as they just constantly just keep passing around the outside, Luke. Nothing driving towards goal so far as it's Smith behind the net. She'll cut closer towards the goal of Carr. And it's 
Wiley back again with some speed driving towards center. Sela Wiley puts on the brakes, looks to jam towards goal, instead looks to find Quirk, but instead it's taken away. And another foul, it'll be a good opportunity for Oswego State as Sela Wiley will go for the free position shot. Oswego has been rather well on the conversion rate there, 23 for 40 from the free possession line. So another good opportunity here with a good goal scorer with the ball on her stick. Wiley driving it in. Good protection and another good save there by Carr. Carr looking to scoop it away and retain possession, and she will. And she'll take some time and let things reset. As Fredoni trails a goal early here in the first quarter. Great play by Carr there. Her 80th save of the season that's picture perfect what you want to do it comes right at your stick right there she's able to go out of the crease and get the ground ball for herself as she looks to get a clear right here this is exactly what Oswego was able to do against New Paltz great defense on the clears and they're doing it once again here against the Blue Devils you haven't really seen much offense over the last two games for Oswego's opponents, whether it be Nazareth, whether it be New Paltz. Oswego's just been all over, and they uh -huh. force another turnover here. It's going to be Fierro. Fierro there dishes it off for Smith. Smith walking in, and she scores. A 3-1 to -one lead now for Oswego State on the turnover by Carr as it goes from Fierro to Noel Smith to make it a 3-1 to -one game. Usually when you have a one-on-one -on -one against the goalie right there, you want to fake high and shoot low, and that is the exact opposite of what Smith did. She shot it top left and was able to go anyway, get right past the shoulder of, or, shoulder of Carr for Oswego's third goal of the game, and fast breaks like that are also going to be backbreakers for, for Donia or for Oswego, whoever gets the fast break there, and that's exactly what happened. Oswego on the defensive side, you talk about being sound on the offense, defense just as well. 86.9% effective on the clears. Fredonia, on the other hand, at 79.1, 131 for 173. So not really efficient on getting the ball out of the defensive zone, and it showed right there as Carr made the costly error, and it goes right in the back of the net with Noel Smith bearing a 3-1 to -one game, 936 remaining here in this first quarter right here on WTOP10. As Puchko looks to go for the draw, but as they'll retain possession with 9.30 remaining. As Buchko bring it across now for Decola. Isabel Decola. Now for Buchko in the center, pressured by Smith, the most recent goal scorer for the Lakers. They finally bring it across. It's Molly McGowan. McGowan down the right-hand side as she's pressured by Quirk. It's dropped off now as Fredoni will look to set up things. It's Farino. Back across now for Culver. Pressured by Townsend, and she'll dish it right back off now for Brown. Brown with possession once more, 8.50 remaining, and leaves off for Culver. Culver on the cutback, gets by Townsend, drops it off, looking for a shot. And it looks like a foul will be here for Fredonia with 8.44 remaining. Had a couple options there. They had a runner right over to her right. She didn't quite see it, but it was a good opportunity for a nice give-and-go goal. Couldn't quite get the shot off. So we see what the referees say here. As things will reset in a way, Fredonia looking to get another opportunity to cut this game back to one. They did it when they were down 2 nothing. Let's see if they can make it down by two goals once more. 3-1 to one with 8.44 remaining shots. In favor of the Lakers all day long, 4-1. to one. one shot more compared to the current lead. It'll be Oswego ball here, interesting. Must have been a collision out in front for the Lakers as it's dropped off for Kamai, and we'll see what she does with it. As there's been a couple times where the possession itself for the Lakers, they've taken their time with possession in the defensive zone and have been able to work things up rather quickly. Kamai dishes one off for Russian close to her. And Sophie Russian on the cutback and McCursher the trailer. Russian carrying it across center field and bringing it right on in. And she'll send it over now for Lembo. Isabel Lembo now lost. She's got a lot of space to work with. Drops it over for Smith behind the goal. Back up top now and it's Fierro, McNally back for Quirk. Over for Wiley, McConnell. Down low, Lembo once more. Isabel Lembo hasn't gone a single game. Looking to find 
McConnell out in front, but the pass was just not enough. We mentioned Isabel Lembo haven't, has not gone a game without us going goalless. Has scored in every single game for Oswego State so far, providing that secondary offense, and she's had a great year to start off entering Suniac play. That play almost looked like the Shea McConnell goal just a few minutes ago. Just a nice give and go right into the Shark Tank there. Couldn't quite get it to go. Wiley looks to throw one on. It's sticked away by Carr, and the rebound comes free before Carr is able to scoop it up and grab back possession for Fredonia. As Oswego looks to man mark this defensive zone coverage, which has been stellar so far as Fredonia hasn't been able to really get anything going. Oswego's coverage has been tight point midway through the first quarter. Carr with some time. She currently has 65 on the possession clock, and she'll still look for an open trailer, and Oswego has been all Thomas. over it. Incredible. We're nearing almost 40 seconds of the goalie having possession, not being able to find anybody. And they were just right on him nonstop. Oswego hasn't been able to let Fredonia get anything. The only one that I saw a little bit was Buchko was free for McNally, and they finally get it across center field. And the fumble on the turnover, it's going to be Greglia dropping the ball and scooped right back up by Smith, and she'll bring it across. Noel Smith looking for Wiley, and it goes just past her stick, and it'll be recovered back by Fredonia. It's Jacobs. Cameron Jacobs contested by Quirk and Wiley, but it's grabbed back by Jacobs on the foul. A forced turnover by McNally. And it's scooped right back up by Oswego, and she caused the turnover, and she'll dish her right off for McConnell with 5.55 remaining. McConnell up for Wiley at the point. Across now for Quirk, and Oswego will reset this offense which has just been constantly relentless here in this first quarter so far. Lembo behind the net now, feeding on in front. McConnell the shot, and she rips it home. 4-1 to one, Oswego State as McConnell receives the dish from Lembo and buries it top right for the Lakers to extend their lead to three. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep on going and do the same thing over and over again. Lembo to Shea McConnell. Lembo able to find her almost every time that she cuts. She's at least a step behind her defender, and there's nothing you could car can do. You're just leaving her high and out to dry right there. So it would be a tough save for her to get, and Shea McConnell with her second of the day. There's just so many weapons on this team when it comes to offense. When you look at this team, you think of many people. You think of Lembo, McConnell, Wiley, Fierre. Masson Davis, who we haven't even seen in the lineup today as well. Just so many options for this Lakers team to adapt with, generate points, generate scoring opportunities. And we see another one here, 4-1 to one with 5.35 remaining here in this first quarter play. Oswego with five players with at least 15 or more goals. I mean, it could come from anywhere, anywhere at any time for this Oswego team. Really hard to defend. This is Quirk once more on the faceoff, and... It'll be Buchko as well sending it up in the air, and it's recovered back by Noel Smith. Oswego, you talk about how good their offense be, has been. It starts off with those draw controls. They have been dominant on the faceoffs, and Fredoni, on the other hand, the clears themselves have not been good. They're one for four so far. It's Wiley back up top, and she's pressured by Jacobs. Back over for Quirk and McNally for Fierro. Swigo's ball movement getting a lot faster over the last few minutes as we've, as we've started to notice. It's Quirk and back for Wiley. McConnell back for Wiley up top. Sends it right back for McConnell as she gets pushed to the outside and we'll send it right back there for Quirk driving in a shot and that one goes just wide. Incredible save there by Carr. Back of the point, Wiley looking for one more chance and she'll bury it home. Seela Wiley getting the 5-1 to one lead for the Lakers as the senior gets her first goal on the day and is inching closer towards that 100-goal mark. I was just about to say inching, inching closer to that 100-goal mark for Fredonia there. Their defense getting a little bit off their feet there, a little bit confused as they were trying to double each player there and unable to get back to their original player, and it just leaves an open quirk for a goal there. She's able to go right in, or not, excuse me, an open Wiley there for a goal. 
this quirk that took the first shot, but Oswego, relentless each and every position, or possession, excuse me. The back-to-back Offensive Player of the Week last week, Defensive Player of the Week this week, and she finds her first goal on the day, her 92nd in her career in the green and gold, as it's 5-1 to one with 4.43 remaining. Buchko and Quirk on the draw once more. Smith looking to scoop it up, and she will, and it seems like the constant story again and again. It's Quirk off the draw, Smith with the recovery, and Oswego goes back to work. Fierro down low for Lembo behind the net. Sending it across now far side for McConnell. Back up McNally. To the near side now for Quirk. Down over for Smith. Over for Hill. As we see Alexis Hill in the lineup. A couple of rotations so far early for Britt Howard and company. McConnell. Back over for Julia Quirk. Hill looking to pose the screen there. McNally back for McConnell. Over for McNally. Back for Quirk. Sends it over for Alexis Hill. Back for Quirk, over McNally, back McConnell. They've been working that far side for the last few seconds now with 30 seconds remaining on the possession clock. Back up to the point, McNally contested, but the ball comes free and scooped right back up by Hill. She'll send over for Lembo, looking to cut towards the middle, lets one fly, and that one goes off the stick of Carr and in the near side corner where it's a bow for it, and it's scooped right back up. By the Fredoni Blue Devils, but be a foul on Megan Carlos, and it'll be a Swigo ball. It looks like they're resetting that possession clock once more for Oswego to keep this offensive pressure going for the Lakers. Currently up by four goals late here in the first quarter, 3:15 remaining. Had to reset the shot clock there. It was a beautiful save by Carr off a lefty shot from Lembo. Got possession back. And now Swiegel will go back to work, and they got a whole minute to work with. As brought back to the far side is Lembo. Push to the outside, drops it off for McConnell, looking to cut in, and she buries it home. Beautiful. Talk about a hat trick in the first 12 minutes or so for Shea McConnell, Lembo, the dynamic duo right there. Lembo able to draw her defender and then just the backdoor cut by McConnell there. Easy goal. And like I said earlier, it's hard for a goalie on that one-on-one -on -one to really protect the goal there. So you can shoot anywhere. That's a, it's a large width to protect that goal there. Carl wasn't able to do it there. It makes it a 6-1 game for Oswego. That combo has seemed to not miss all season long, and they do it again. A 6-1 lead for Oswego State. Three minutes remaining here in the first quarter as Seela Wiley comes back on for the Lakers. Katie McNally goes off for Britt Howard's squad as looking for win number 48 in her career here at the program as the Lakers lead by five late here in the first. Quirk and Buchko on the draw once more and it goes up towards the offensive side of the Lakers but scooped right back up by Quirk on the draw. And sends it there for Lembo. Slowing things down a little bit, allowing the rest of her team to get back into the offensive zone as the Lakers will reset. Up to the point, Lembo across for Quirk. Dishes it over for Hill. Hill cutting towards the mill, gets by three attackers and draws the foul. The Swiga will have another opportunity. It'll be the freshman Alexis Hill going to the free position line. Two goals already so far this season in seven games played. First goal against SUNY Morrisville just a couple of weeks ago. Hill walking one in, draws back to the far side, gets pressured by a few Blue Devils and makes her have to retreat a little bit. And it looks like another foul has been drawn by Oswego State as Quirk currently has the ball and looks like Hill will have another opportunity. Maybe try and try again. Hill, one of the few lefties on this Lakers squad. It'll be interesting to see here if she can score one. Alexis Hill on the far side now, driving towards goal. Let's one go, and that one goes high over the goal. Noel Smith will be the first one there for it. This will be picked up by Lembo for McConnell. 
To the point now, Quirk across now for Hill. Down low is Smith for Wiley behind the net. We haven't really seen her behind the net as much, but she'll be having possession right now as she looks to evade towards the middle. Wiley dishing it back off for Lembo on the spin and fire. Oh my goodness, was that a beauty. Isabella Lembo with the 7-1 dagger on the spin and lets it go. A six-goal lead now for the Lakers with a minute 54 remaining here in the first. Putting a little pizzazz in their step between CeeLo Wiley with the half face dodge, the fake, and just passing off to Lembo, and she one-ups her with the little spin rooney into the goal there. Makes it a 7-1 ball game, and we're not even done through the first quarter. This is an incredible start for Oswego. The Lakers averaging 13.5 goals per game so far this season, currently ranked third in the SUNYAC. They almost have half of that in just a quarter of time with a minute 54 remaining here in the first quarter. Isabel Lembo, already fantastic so far. Two goals and four assists for six points so far for number two in white. So wind starts to pick up a little bit outside the press box here. He wonders yeah. how much that ball movement will affect Oswego and Fredonia later on in this contest. Ball goes free and it's picked right back up by Cela Wiley, who leads the team in ground balls. As Oswego will go back to work, Fredonia not many offensive opportunities over the last few minutes. It's brought back over to the near side now for the Lakers. It was Fierro dishing it down low, and it's Wiley again. Wiley right out in front for McConnell looking for four, and that one goes just over the goal, and it looks like a defender got a stick on it. Yeah, she couldn't quite bring it in that pass right there. It was a little tip. She couldn't quite bring it in. Ended up shooting it high over the goal, but they retained possession nonetheless. Hill in a battle for it with Carolus, and it's brought back up by the Lakers as it's picked up out midair by McConnell, and the whistle is blown. There's another foul drawn by Oswego State. McConnell will go the free position shot. Looking for number four. Shay McConnell in and she buries it home with the fourth goal for number 12 today. And she had six, as we mentioned last time they played Fredonia. She's already over halfway there now with number four so far in goal number 75 for Shay McConnell. Just an un believable start for the Oswego Lakers in this one to make it an 8-1 ball game almost putting it out of reach here in the first and for Fredonia just not being able to get let alone a shot on goal just any possession at all being able to get it on their opposite side in the field it's credit to Oswego's defense it's really a credit to their offense not giving up anything and just score after score after score after score this is a tough bout for, for uh, the Blue Devils to handle not a good start for Fredonia but a fantastic start for Oswego State as Shea McConnell adds one more to that lead that was already a rather large lead. Now seven goals in between Oswego and Fredonia. As Quirk is on the draw, sends it over to the far side, and Smith with the collision leads to Buchko retaining possession before the cross check by McConnell, and Fredonia will retain possession. 42 ticks remaining here in this first quarter. The Lakers lead by seven. And it's brought back across by Audrey Brown. Now for Farina. Fredonia looking to just get anything going here in this first quarter who haven't scored in quite some time. Farina driving towards goal of the shot and looks like Kamide got a stick on it. And Fredonia will keep possession. They got 16 seconds to set up something. Woods looking to drive towards goal. She's pressured by Russian. Aaron Woods trying to peel off Russian, but instead a turnover there. Hill looking to scoop for it, and she will with four seconds remaining, and the Lakers will go into the end of the first quarter up by seven against the Fredonia Blue Devils here in their second Suniac matchup so far. And that was a tough opportunity for Fredonia to lose out on because Farino beat her defender. She had a clear step to the goal goes on the right side of the goal on the outside of the net that was a really good look for Fredonia probably their best look of at least since their first goal right there and earlier in the first that's one that you wish you have back to make it an 8-2 ball game it's still a seven point deficit I'm not saying that Fredonia is out of it but they have a really tough hill to climb Tom's 
And then one of the things that's been huge for Oswego State is the coaching behind it. Britt Howard hired in 2016 and so far looking for win number 48. Conference win, looking for conference win number 26. So a lot of credit goes to her and the squad that she's created with this team. The offense is really, you talk about defense as well. Just a nice quality combo between offense and defense is what this team has been all about so far this season. Yeah, and you have to look at some of the development from these players, from Lembo, from Wiley, from McConnell, from Quirk. Those are all brought in under Britt Howard. She's been able to bring them in and develop them to be these offensive juggernauts in the SUNYAC, especially. Real credit to her, real credit to this Oswego coaching staff for a brilliant job that they've done over the course of a few seven seasons now. And then on the other hand, Fredonia having another new coach in the lineup. It's going to be Tori Poff Burger hired in the fall of 2022. She began her coaching career as a grad assistant at her alma mater in St. Mary's in Maryland in 2016-2017 and an assistant at Boonesboro High School for three seasons after that. She became the head coach then, but during her career at St. Mary's, NCAA Woman of the Year, a second team All-America, Dean's List every year, and first team All-Chesapeake region for Poffenberger looking to try and turn this program around who hasn't really had the greatest of seasons over the last few years. Absolutely trying to hope to turn it around and for the most part they have so far this season. Maybe not so far in the Suniac. This is only their second game in the Suniac but they only had one win last year Thomas. They were 1-15. in 15. They have five wins so far this season. They needed a change at the, uh, at the head coaching position there and they already have five times the amount of wins that they had last season. Hoping to get their uh, 11th win all time against Oswego here today. And Oswego currently out shooting the Blue Devils 15 to two, and shots on goal wise 11 to one for the Lakers. Fredonia not really getting anything going. One for four on clears. Oswego one for two for the Lakers, and turnovers have been the story of this contest so far. Fredonia with six, Oswego with two. Now Swigo leads by seven entering the second quarter. And that's a credit to how dominant their offense has been. When you're talking, when you're playing in these conditions with the wind whipping here at Laker Turf Stadium to only have two turnovers through the first 15 minutes, it's an incredible feat to the, for this team. And we'll start off just the way we started here in the first quarter. It's going to be Quirk on the faceoff against Puchko. A little rotation as... Oswego will go back to work and they'll reset. It's going to be Lembo with possession now. Isabella Lembo, a point getter today for Oswego State, currently with six. McNally back now, back out now on the field for the Lakers, and it's brought back across now for Smith. Smith for McConnell. Back up to the point is Lembo, and across now for Fierro. Currently, it looks like we're having some technological issues on the score clock itself. 26 seconds into the second quarter of play right here on WTOP 10. Thomas Turgeon and Luke Rosenthal with you. It's the Lakers leading by seven in the second Suniac contest of the year, and we talk about how important getting that Suniac schedule up and running with some victories. And Oswego having a good start. Got one done against New Paltz and looking to make it two here today. Yeah, they only had one instance of two Suniac wins in a row last season. It came pretty late in the season. It was too too little, too late for Oswego at that point. But in order to really make your mark in the Suniac, it's important to get those early wins, especially at home, like in a game that they're up 8-1 and trying to put it away pretty early on here. you got to get those wins early in the season. It'll make up for it later, make it a lot easier of a road later on. The question is, Will we see a couple of those changes in the Oswego State Lakers lineup? Will we see some people differently that we wouldn't see as much? Resting those offensive powerhouses, Lembo, Wiley, McConnell. You never know. I mean, you got a lead currently is seven goals, but it is also early here in the second quarter. We've seen these teams be able to string off many goals back-to-back and generate some quality opportunities for the Lakers. and. Fredonia, you never know. It could go the other way as we'll start things right back up here again here in the second quarter, and it's Smith once more. Drops it off for McConnell. Shea McConnell now for Lembo at the top, and she'll cut things in towards center. Lembo on the screen by McNally. Dishes it over for McNally, and the ball comes free. Wiley recovers in, scoops it right back up. Wiley sending it up top for Lembo once more. Looking for another screen, I'd probably say... Somewhere in that slot is going to be Quirk again, behind the net. 
Julie Quirk. Back across now for Smith. Back up to the point is Lembo. Isabel Lembo on the spin. We saw that early in the first quarter. That led to a goal, but this time the defense had other ideas on the pushback by DeCola. And the Lakers have to reset their offense. Ten seconds remaining on the possession clock. It's Wiley once more. Wiley looking to drive towards goal. Let's one go, and it goes right into the netting of the stick of car, and she'll make the save as Fredonia will get possession back a minute 30 into the second quarter. That was Fredonia's best defensive possession of the game so far to be able to cut off the spin move of Lembo and then get the save from a whipping shot from Cela Wiley. Best defensive look they've had so far this game. Best defensive look. They got the stop. They really limited Oswego's opportunities. But on the other hand, they just forced a turnover just a couple seconds ago that could have led the other way. As Fredonia looks to break out center field, and they'll regroup things in the back. It's Fukosik bringing it across center field, pressured by McConnell with a good jab there. Vukosic sends it over for McGowan. McGowan down the near side, pressured by McConnell once more, sent down to the near side corner now for Culver. Julie Culver, McCursher watching her, and will send it down behind the net now. As the Blue Devils look to go work, 60 seconds on the possession clock. Brought back across now, it's Corrales. Dropping it off now for Vukosic. As Fredonia looks to open up something. Oswego's defense has been really good in the neutral zone. That we haven't really seen much in the defensive zone so far. It's brought back across now for Buchko. Looking to generate something. As the current offensive player of the week in the Suniac has been rather quiet so far today. Which goes open here. Kaylin Carolus. Brought back up to the point now for Jacobs. Jacobs pushed off now by Buscalia and then once more by McCursher. Sent up to the point now for Culver looking to juke and jive, but instead Kamide had other ideas. Grabs possession back for the Lakers and it's Buscalia down the near side. Heads up play there by Kamide to be able to go out of goal there, get the ground ball, start the fast break early. McCursher bringing it across center field. Drops it off for McConnell. Gets by Brown now as she'll bring it down the near side. McConnell pauses. Waits brought back to the point is Lembo as Oswego will reset. 64 seconds remaining on the possession clock. Currently 12 shots on goal for the Lakers compared to Fredonia's one. As it's Wiley behind the goal now of Carr. Wiley looking to bring things towards middle as we see a lot of man coverage up front. Wiley a one-on-one, -on -one the shot, and that one got sticked away by Carr. McConnell forcing the loose ball, but instead causes the foul, and Fredonia will retain possession with 10.55 remaining as the clock continues to run. Not in favor of the Blue Devils as they trail seven here midway through the second quarter. I like that play call for Oswego, being able to get Cela Wiley some space, have all the other players draw their defenders outwards. Didn't love the angle there for Wiley. It was going to be a hard shot nonetheless. And it makes it for Donnie's ball right now. Car now behind her own goal. Pressured there by Fierro. as Pass. Sends it up to center field, and Fredonia will be able to break out. It's grabbed back by Brown, who sends it right back over for Vukosic as McConnell draws the turnover, but scooped right back up by the Blue Devils. It's going to be McGowan. Cross for Culver as she gets by McCursher. Culver's got some room to work before Wiley cuts back in. And it looks like it's going to be a foul on Wiley, and it'll be Culver going to the line. Yeah, had her hands wide on her stick there, gave her the little push. They're going to call the cross check right there. Julie Culver at the free position line. McCursher to the right, Quirk to the left. Culver ripping one in. A save by Kamai, the rebound, and she gets the save. Good save by Kamai there. It looked like it stung a little bit, but was able to prevent the rebound from going into the back of the net to remain an 8-1 game here in the second quarter. Julia Quirk bringing it across, sends it over for Wiley. A little more space now for Cela Wiley. Brings it near side, Shea McConnell. As Oswego will look to get things going here, it's Lembo over for McNally. Far side now, Fierro. Behind the net, Smith with Wiley as well as they'll rotate, but Smith now brings it back to the near side. McConnell on the cut, but nothing there as the passing lane was jammed. Lembo on the screen, looking to drive towards goal. Let's one fly, but it's scooped right up by Emily Carr. A relatively easy save 
for the Fredonia netminder as she'll keep the ball now and let some players get open for Fredonia to break out. Really interesting call by Britt Howard here. She basically switches Bella Lembo and Cela Wiley. Cela Wiley's playing behind next. She's playing quite near the goal, whereas Lembo's playing up top. Now, you got to think, maybe it's because it's an 8-1 game. They're trying to work some new offense here, work some uh, players at different positions. As Fredonia brings things across and taking a tumble there was meant, excuse me, Brown, Audrey Brown taking the fall. And she'll retain possession for Fredonia. It's grabbed back by Vukosic with 8.35 remaining. So Swigo really pushing things to the outsides. Fredonia, on the other hand, their defensive strategy has been more really cramming that slot and not being able to generate any passing lanes for Oswego to work with. As Townsend boxing out the Fredonia attacker there being careless and Buscalia as well forces the turnover and scooped up by Oswego. Great defense there. When all of the players are grouped up like that to try and give your player space, you're able to double because some of the players just lose their defenders and lose control, don't really know where they're supposed to go. So you're able to double there, and they can force the turnover. Oswego bringing things right back in on the stick of Katie McNally. Dropping it off now for Fierro. Sent down low for Smith. Over for Wiley. Zila Wiley. McConnell was cutting in, but... Instead, sends it right back up for Lembo at the top. McNally across for Fierro to the far side, over down low for Smith, down low Wiley. You mentioned Isabel Lembo as she tries to cut in and look for the pass there, but Wiley instead had other ideas, sending it right back down near side. Wiley with possession, trying to drive towards center, and she's pushed away, and it's grabbed back by Quirk. Slides it over for Fierro. Fierro for McNally, the shot, and another good save there by Carr. The ball comes free, though. It's scooped right back up by Carr. A little bit of a scary situation there for the Fredoni defense. That was dangerous. Carr did save it, but didn't quite get it in her stick. Nobody could really find where the ball was, and when she finally got an eye on it, she was out of position. So if us, we got the ball there, it would have been an easy goal because you got your goalie out of net. That did not happen, though. McGowan puts on the brakes and drops it off for Culver, who just had the most recent opportunity for Fredoni on that free position shot. Now behind the net for Cockerell. Emma Cockerell dishes one off and leaves it off for Michaela Farino. Back over to the near side now for Culver. As Culver taking her time as she's pressured by McCursher now, a little aggressive. And a, little, a couple jabs there, and that will finally draw the foul. If not once, twice, how about three times? And Fredonia will finally get things to reset a little bit as McCursher was able to push things to the outside, but a little bit too much as another physical bump there by McCursher draws another foul. A little bit of frustration by the Oswego defense there. 6-14 remaining here in the second quarter. Kircher a little uh, a little charismatic there, a little bit too much. Get called, gets called twice. Allows Fredonia maybe their best opportunity to score in this game. Culver now on the free position shot. Wiley to the right and Quirk to the left. Culver in. Couldn't get the shot off. It looks like Quirk might have gotten a stick on it. As Wiley drops it off for Kamide, she'll send it to the far side for Townsend. Townsend for McNally. As she's contested by Jacobs. McNally down the far side, right in front of the Oswego bench, still has it. Looks to find Fierro, and she will. Katie Fierro behind the goal now. Leaves it for Lembo, and the first time we've seen Lembo down below in quite some time. Wiley up for Quirk and sends it right back over for McNally as we see a couple substitutions for the Lakers. McCursher coming off, Buscalia coming out on the defensive end. This is McConnell for Wiley. Back for Quirk, across for McNally with 5.20 remaining, 40 seconds on the possession clock. Noel Smith behind the net now for Lembo across. Isabel Lembo now directly behind the nav car. Sends it break right back over to the far side. Lembo cutting Wiley towards the center. Wasn't able to corral it as the ball comes free and it goes flying towards center field before it's grabbed back up. Oswego looks like drew the foul, so Fredonia will keep possession with 4.50 remaining. 
Yellumbo had a good look there to Cecilia Wiley. He got the pass tipped by, I believe it was McGowan. Good defensive possession. It's really a good quarter for Fredonia so far defensively. They haven't let up a goal, barely let up, a, only let up a few shots on goal. As Molly McGowan sends it down low for Emma Cockrell. Cockrell, a one on one with Townsend. We saw that ISO down at the other end with Cecilia Wiley, but it's. Looks like it's going to be the Lakers winning this battle as well as Townsend scoops up the loose ball and will bring it across center field before sending it for McConnell. McConnell being pressured by Buchko on the cut back and brought over and it looks like we'll have our first time out of the second quarter as teams go to their respective areas. 4.08 remaining here in the second quarter. The Lakers dominant so far in that first quarter second quarter not as much offense just more killing a little bit of clock as they lead eight to one late here in the second yeah i think that's probably why Britt howard ended up calling this time out here is because maybe she's a little frustrated that they haven't gotten the offense uh in the second quarter that they did in the first they only have well, i believe three shots on goal in this quarter whereas they had 12 in the first not really being able to get a rhythm in on offense so far through the first 11 minutes here well, while we have a little pause for the cause, tune in to Laker Connections Thursday nights at 10.30 with myself, Jared Wakefield, and Tommy Tallarino. Catch up on all of the latest Laker headlines, interviews, and more. Find us on Spectrum Channel 96 and streaming on the web on YouTube and Facebook. Jared, a little little plug of the Laker Connections <laughs> Yeah, a little there. plug of your show, little, huh? A little bit, of the, hmm. little bit of the show. I promise it's not my fault, but regardless, it's <laughs> the Lakers leading... <laughs> 8-1, to one, 408 remaining here in this second quarter. Dominant performance by Oswego so far. A couple key takeaways. Shea McConnell with four goals. Isabella Lembo, two goals and four assists for a total of six points. Cela Wiley, only a goal and assist so far for her. So a little bit quiet for the defensive player of the week, but that's okay, though, because on the other hand, only one goal currently so far for Fredonia. Yeah, and another reason why I think they probably put Cela Wiley over behind the goal there at X is because when they're when Fredoni gets a save and, and the goalie's looking for a clear, looking for somebody to get open, Cela Wiley can just go right in front of the goalie there, just attack her. Haven't seen him much in this one so far, but in their game against New Paltz, I mean, she attacked Gabriella Tommaso of New Paltz the entire game, was face guarding pretty much the entire time, caused a few turnovers. That's what helped win her Defensive Player of the Week in the Suniac for Women's Lacrosse. That's probably another reason why, but I think they're going to end up moving her back into her original spot. They can move her wherever. She's great wherever. Offensively, defensively, she can do it all. She's done it all in the last two weeks. Offensive Player of the Week and Defensive Player of the Week. Back-to-back -back weeks, and the Lakers lead by seven with 4.08 remaining here on WTOP 10. Luke Rosenthal joined with me, myself, Thomas Turgeon, and the Lakers looking to get Suniac win number two to start off their early conference run here at the Lakers turf as Fredonia will go back to their respective defensive zone Oswego looks like we'll go back to work and try and generate some scoring opportunities which haven't been by many so far this quarter not a single goal recorded in the second quarter so far 10 minutes in in the second quarter and all goals were scored in the first as it remains just the way we ended that first quarter at eight to one they are going to put that dynamic duo right next to each other again lembo and shay mcconnell want to get some sort of scoring done here in the second it wouldn't surprise me at all if they start that cut back here on the near side as lembo has it now once more lembo for mcconnell back up to the point quirk over for wiley Cela Wiley across for McNally, back to Fierro on the far side, down low for Smith. Smith for Lembo. Lembo back for McConnell, 50 seconds remaining on the possession clock. Wiley across for McNally. Katie McNally drops it off for Quirk now, and she tries to spin off a defender but was unable to do so. Drops it off for Wiley, looks for Quirk on the leap, but instead it's scooped right back up by the Fredonia defense, and it's carried across by Graglia. A foul there leads to Fredonia retaining possession. It'll be Sarah Graglia once more with the ball with 3.05 remaining here in the second quarter of play. Emily Carr currently... Current goaltender for the Fredonia Blue Devils and 
Really the only goaltender that's played so far this season for Fredonia. Sidney Booth only in one game so far this season for Fredonia. So it's been really all car for Fredonia. On the other hand, Oswego State, Sarah Kamide with eight games played. But on the other hand, Nicole Ahern and Elena Iacovici also in the lineup for four games aside as they've been able to rotate their goaltending tandem early in the season. Get a good look at what's in store for the near future as Kamida Jr. and Ahern and Iacovici, both freshmen coming in this season for Britt Howard's squad. Molly McGowan now with the free position opportunity. Sends one in and another good save by Kamida as she scoops it up and sends it over for McCursher on the near side. Kiara McCursher gets by Gregly and she'll bring one in and Oswego will go to work. 2.20 remaining. Wiley over for Fierro, or excuse me, Cork rather, and drops it off for McNally. Back for Fierro. Noel Smith over for McCall on the near side. Two minutes flat remaining here in the second quarter of play. Lembo. On the screen, peels across to the right side, and she takes a tumble, but a good save there by Carr as she'll whip it right on out. It's carried back across by Culver. Here comes Julie Culver, right down Main Street. Culver looks to drop one off there for Cockrell, but instead the turnover was forced by Townsend, and the Lakers will grab back possession 8-1 to with a minute 25 remaining. That was a really good look for Fredonia right there. They caught uh, McCursher lurking a little bit. She was on the sideline talking to Coach Britt Howard and couldn't get back on defense quick enough, but they were able to suppress the damage that could have been done. McNally now once more, a minute 10 remaining here in the first half. Isabella Lembo, or excuse me, Noel Smith, and she gets a good jab there and takes a tumble, and that'll be a foul as Smith gets shoved down, it'll be Oswego, or excuse me, it is Smith, yes, in the near side corner. And the Lakers will retain possession beneath the goal with 56 seconds remaining here in this first half. As it's brought back up to the point is Lembo. Lembo across for McNally and then to the far side, Fierro. Fierro right on from McConnell right up Main Street. As Shea McConnell tallies another one for Oswego's first goal in the second quarter. It's Shea McConnell, who else? Number five for 12 with 44.4 seconds remaining here in the first half. Shea McConnell, almost every possession, able to lull her defender to sleep, catches him not looking, and in that one second that they take her eyes off her, bam, she has gone right into the hole, open for a pass, and then open for a shot. She scores that, makes it a 9-1 ball game. She's been incredible as Oswego gets their 17th shot on goal compared to Fredonia's three. That's a, that's a, a solution to win. It says something about their offense as a whole. Absolutely relentless in this first half. Eight goals in the first, only one goal so far in the second. It's by the most recent one and the most frequent one, Shea McConnell with 44 seconds remaining. It's Quirk on the faceoff once more as the Lakers look to really eat this clock out going into the half, only allowing one goal. Got a change on the faceoffs for Fredonia there. It's Cameron Jacobs on faceoffs, trying to get a change, trying to get some draw control. It's really a Suigos controlled the draw control a lot and brought right back in another shot by Fierro. It's knocked down by Carr with 24 seconds remaining. If Fredonia wants something, they better move fast with 20 seconds remaining here in this first half. Carr taking a little bit of time. It looks like she might just eat the clock away. Either that or Oswego's defense is really just all over the place, covering up any little seam possible with three seconds remaining. As It looks like Carr will just eat this out. She looks at the clock. The horn will sound, and the Lakers enter the half up eight and only allowing one goal at the half, leading the Fredoni Blue Devils by a score of 9-1. to one. Didn't love that possession there. You had 20 seconds to work with, and I understand that you're not able to get a player open, but at least just take a shot down the field. And there's only a few seconds remaining. Might as well just take a Hail Mary for a shot. You never know what could happen. Being down 9-1, it's worth a try. Couldn't get anything done right there. And it's things like that that has Fredonia in this hole right now, down 9-1. 
And Oswego currently out shooting Fredonia 17 to 3 in shots on goal. They've really had the better hand of the Blue Devils and been able to generate a lot of offensive opportunities for Oswego State. Fredonia, not as much. Not as much at all, and it starts with that Oswego defense not even allowing fast breaks. Their defense isn't just great on clears. It's just great everywhere on fast breaks no matter what. They have players riding everybody, riding them out of bounds, just attacking the ball every single ground ball. They'll have at least three players there. And even when they're trying to set screens on clears, they'll always switch off, get another player on the attackers. Everything they're doing is just outstanding for Oswego. And then on the other hand, you look at the players who watched so far today. Sela Wiley, only a goal for the Lakers so far. And on the other hand, Sidney Buchko not getting anything so far for Fredonia. It's the only goal scored today by Aaron Woods. Yeah, both players really relatively quiet Quiet for Sela Wiley. We've been accustomed to her having, you know, three-point games, four-point games, getting up to five-point plus. A little bit quiet in the first half as she inches closer and closer to that 100-goal mark, but what she doesn't have on the stat sheet right now is she's making it up for effort everywhere, whether it's on fast breaks, getting back on defense, attacking the ball. She's doing it all for this team as well as so many other players. Sela Wiley and company with a big lead so far for the Lakers, and they're going to have about eight minutes to sit and chat as we'll take a quick break. When we come back, the halftime report is next. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Shine on that boy. 
Look at the bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. <laughs> yep. Ten out connected. of ten recommend on Yelp. I'm buzzed. I spent too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face uh, filters. Okay, you know what? <laughs> yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Welcome back into the Laker Turf Stadium right here on WTOP 10. It's Oswego State leading 9-1 to at the half against the Fredonia Blue Devils. Welcome back, everyone. Thomas Turgeon with you alongside my partner in crime for today, Luke Rosenthal. And Luke, overall, I mean, this team has just been firing on all cylinders going into the second half. Everything you want to talk about, whether it's ground balls, turnovers, just passes, clears, scoring, defense, everything. Oswego is doing it all. And that's why the score is what it is, 9-1. to one. They're leading shots on goal, 17-3 to three right now. Only two saves for Kamai, and that's because Fredonia just hasn't really had time of possession. They haven't had the ball, haven't had control, at least a ton of it. It's been all Oswego in this one, Turge. And then on the other hand, you look at their last game against New Paltz, a completely different story. First half, Oswego State trailing 5-3 to three after the first half, and then going in the second half, winning the half 8 to nothing. And getting that final score an 11 to 5 victory for the Lakers over the Hawks there in their last Suniac contest so getting off to the right foot a lot earlier than they wanted to compared to New Paltz. Absolutely. I was on the call for that one, and it was 5-3 at halftime. It was quite the surprising score, to be honest with you. New Paltz hasn't been scoring a whole lot this season. They've been doing a lot better than they were last year at this point in the season, but not the type of game you expect in that one, and then it just took one goal. One goal in the first 30 seconds or so, and that got the ball rolling. It was goal after goal. They ended up shutting out the Hawks in the second half. It was a great second half performance. Tale of two halves really. And then overall, you look at the Suniac as a whole right now, Oswego off to a really good start, sitting at 6-2. and two. Another key takeaway, Cortland, powerhouse in lacrosse, both men's and women's, they're at 6-3. and three. So you look at a lot. On the other hand, Janseo up next for the Lakers. They're at 3-2 and two right now, but they've got a good test in front of them with Oswego coming to town later on in the schedule. So Oswego's got a lot of work to do. They struggled against Geneseo last year. They're looking to turn it around against the Knights this year moving forward. Yeah, and you look at Geneseo right now up against Buffalo State. At Buffalo State, 9-0, shutting out the Bengals so far. Can't tell exactly where we're at in that game, but they are up by quite a lot. And then you talked about Cortland. Cortland won today at home against Potsdam, 23 to six. That's a 17 point deficit right there. Incredible feat by both teams. Both programs are really good in the Suniac. Going to be tough outs for Oswego, especially since Oswego is going to be seeing Geneseo just a week from now. Oswego really generating the offense, but on the other hand, once we're done here, it's going to be WTOP 10 nightly news and is the newscast for students by students. It's the best place to stay up to date on the news, weather, and sports that matter to you most. Tune in Monday through Thursdays at 9 p.m. right here on WTOP 10. As we get ready for the third quarter of action right here at Laker Turf, as there's 30 seconds remaining on the clock, the Lakers really offensive juggernaut to start off this second half up nine to one only one goal scored in that second half being Shay McConnell who leads 
the game itself with goals with five and currently leads in shots for the Lakers with six as well. So a lot of offense on her side, generating a lot of opportunities as Oswego State will come right back out. And we'll get set for the third quarter play as the Lakers just overall a couple key takeaways from that half as a whole. And they've just been all over the place. Shots 22 to 5 in favor of the Lakers. Shots on goal 17 to 3 also in favor of Oswego State. Oswego 8 for 9 on clears and have forced 10 turnovers on the Fredonia side. So Oswego offense, defense, it doesn't matter. They're firing today, and they lead by eight going into the second half. You know, Thomas, like two keys to the game that I wrote down for each team. One for Oswego, attack the Shark Tank, attack the middle right in between all the defenders, right in between the goalie there. They've been doing that. That's why they have nine points right now. And for Fredonia, be able to clear the ball efficiently. They haven't been able to do that. And I think both keys are really explaining this game so far and what makes it a 9-1 ball game. Oswego matchup history against Fredonia. Currently have won the last six against these Blue Devils. The last matchup, March 26th last season, a win that was 19-4. to as the Lakers will get possession to start off here in this third quarter. It's McConnell on the far side. Lembo back up to the point. It looks like we're seeing a little bit of a rotation once more. Lembo back up top. Sela Wiley back down below. As is Fierro across for Smith. Back down low for Wiley. Across now for Smith on the near side. Trying to feed one out in front. McNally will tally at home. An early start here in the second half. 32 seconds in, it's Katie McNally finding the board as the Lakers hit double digits. It's 10-1. 21, can you do something for me? We saw Shea McConnell a bunch of times this one. So in this one, just cut right to the goal, gets a step on her defender and shoots and scores. Exactly what McNa McNally did, gets a step on her defender. They're able to find her for the nice easy goal. The 10th goal for us we go in this one. Katie McNally, her fourth goal this season as the Lakers jump on them early here in this third quarter. It's 10-1 in Fredonia. Not the start you wanted here in this second half. They're trying to snap a two-game losing streak. They haven't really done well in their last four, losing three of their last four against Oneonta Madai and Nazareth. And the Lakers leading by nine, only 30 seconds in to this third quarter. As it's Quirk again on the draw against Buchko, and it's swatted away by Quirk and grabbed right back up by Wiley. The Lakers will go back to town, and here comes Fierro. Katie Fierro behind the net now. It's Smith to the left. Over across now, McConnell back up to the point. Lembo and sent right to the middle is Quirk. Over for McNally, the most recent goal scorer. It's Le Noel Smith now with Wiley. Sela Wiley looking to cut towards middle, burns by the defender and sends one just wide as she got by Sadie Brown but couldn't find the goal of Emily Carr. Incredible face dodge right there by Wiley. That's her signature, that's her go-to, just a tough angle to get that shot off. Wiley back up to the point for Quirk. Looking to drive towards goal in the middle, and she gets tied up and draws the foul. And Oswego will get a free possession opportunity for Julia Quirk. Sort of hit her on the side of the arm there. Honestly, could have been called a ward. Could have seen it going either way. Julia Quirk, only one shot so far today. She's got 15 goals this season for the Lakers. And how about 16? Julia Quirk finding the back of the net, and they currently lead 11 to what? Yeah, that was a tough break for Fredonia right there. Just wrong stick placement. The ref calls it on them. Gives us to go the free position shot. And Cork puts it behind net. It's hard for Carr to really do anything there when you don't really have a defender in front of you to make a move on her. And Cork, that's another easy one, makes it an 11-1 ball game. Now the mercy rule in effect for the Oswego State Lakers. Now a running clock until the lead gets cut back down to single digits as it's a 10-goal lead for Oswego State. 12.53 remaining here in this third quarter as the clock just dwindles away. A little bit better for Oswego State. Closer of getting out of here with a win. Fredonia, on the other hand, not only are they fighting the scoreboard, they're fighting the clock that is attached to the scoreboard as well. That's tough. A lot of different things that they're fighting. Interesting, they brought Buchko in for the faceoff last time, and now they just took her back out, puts Cameron Jacobs back in that position. Got to wonder if something's wrong with her stick there or if they just want a, another player playing it. 
Townsend now across the field now for Quirk as she'll bring it across center field. Julia Quirk down low for McConnell. Has five, already matching what she had last season against Fredonia, and she had six points in that one. She only has five points today. Just missing the assist compared to last season. Five goals and one assist last year for Shea McConnell and Cela Wiley both. Noel Smith back for McConnell, cross for Lembo. Back for Quirk at the point. Dish near side for Fierro. Fierro on the spin, looking to dish it off, and she finds Wiley down below. Cela Wiley behind the net, bringing it towards the middle now, trying to drive towards goal, the shot. And another good stop by, by Carr on the Wiley opportunity. Another turnover there. McConnell kicks it away, and uh -huh. it goes out Tough of bounds. Tough footing right there for McConnell. Unfortunate bounce there. It's taken back. Molly McGowan drops it off for Carr as Fredonia looks to open a passing lane up for the Blue Devils. Carr waiting right around the outside arc for the Blue Devils as she'll inch out towards center field. Carr waiting. The clock is still not their friend with 10.55 remaining. Carr sends it up. Open some space looking for Gareglia, but instead the ball trickles down to the defensive zone of the Lakers before it's picked right back up by Sophie Russian, bringing it across center field with some speed and some time. Russian now on the far side. Drops it off for McConnell as she'll retreat. McConnell for Lembo. It's Katie McNally now who found the score sheet today. Fierro down low for Noel Smith, sending it across for Wiley. Wiley for Smith. Smith leaves it off for Fierro. Smith will cut towards the center now. Is a little bit of an iso now and finds Quirk games and fires in a good save there by Carr. The ball comes free and it's scooped right back up by the Fredonia netminder as Oswego's offense will retract with 10 minutes remaining here in the third. That was a good look there for Quirk. And to be honest with you, that was, that was a tough shot to get off. I didn't know if it was going to be on goal or if it was going to go behind it. She got it around two defenders, a righty whip to the goal. Good on Carr for saving that one. Tenth Emily of the day. Carr, Emily Carr waiting for just any passing lane to open up, and it's just all over the place. You see Lembo man-marking Vukosic very well. Just nothing opening up so far until now where the Lakers, a little bit of an opening there, and Cameron Jacobs looks to send one in for Greglia, but, Greglia, but the pass was incomplete before it's picked right up. Buchko, Buchko, pushed to the outsides by Wiley. Cross now for Culver and sends it over to the far side now as... Fredonia has had their first possession in the offensive zone in quite some time. As is Cockrell behind the net of Kamai. Cockrell tries to cut on the spin, or spin move, looks to dish one off to the far side there, and it finds the back of the net. Sydney Buchko finally finding the scoreboard. It's 11-2 now with 8.57 remaining here in the third. Kaylin Carolus with just a brilliant underhand pass. Couldn't quite get the overhand because she had a defender right in front of her, but to get it off, and it was a wide open net, wide open goal. Makes it an 11 2 ball game, inch by inch. It's going to take a lot of goals to get it back in this one, but it starts with that one to make it 11 2. And Oswego now only leading by nine, which causes the clock to stop now, so we will have stoppage time. and Clock won't continue to run anymore until Oswego sc scores again, if they score again. As they lead by nine here, midway through the third quarter. It looks like we have a, either an equipment malfunction or something on the far sideline. It's Katie McNally talking with head coach Britt Howard. And she seems to be okay, and the ball comes free. Fredonia now on the attack. Audrey Brown sending across to the far side now is Farino. Farino back down low. And it's Corrales. Brought right back in now by Corrales. Sent up to the point now for Jacobs. 
Jacobs driving to the outside and sent right back low for Corrales. It's Corrales once more being pressured by Towns, and she's not able to get anything going, so she'll leave it right off for Gregley as Fredonia will reset. 8-10 remaining here in this third quarter. It's brought towards the middle and a little bit of a collision there as McCursher falls on top of Julie Culver. It'll be a free position opportunity for Fredonia. I think she just caught a case of the uh, the turf monster there. Momentum was a little too much. Takes a trip, takes a fall, but is going to get a really good look here to potentially make this an 11-3 ball game, Turge. A point-blank opportunity, 8.05 remaining for Julie Culver. She leads the team in shots and shots on goal today, and she'll bring one in, and it looks like she got sticked away. It'll be sent down the near side as it'll be recovered, looks like, by the Lakers, and it'll be Alexis Hill now with it. That's multiple times now. Cork has gone back on those free position shots right on goal to be able to hit it out of the offender's stick there. That's at least the second, third time this game that that's happened. Quirk with a long reach being able to prevent some scoring opportunities from happening as Buscalia now with it. Sends it to the far side for McCursher as she'll bring it across center field. Kara McCursher puts on the brakes now but leaves it off for Shea McConnell as Oswego will enter the offensive zone. McConnell down low for Lembo. Or excuse me, Smith, now Fierro. Fierro for Hill. Hill back up to the point. Quirk finds a cross for Lembo. Lembo puts on the Jets and pauses, waits, dishes it over for Hill, and she buries it home. And the clock will continue to run now as the Lakers put that lead back up to 10. And now with 6.53 remain, the Lakers lead 12-2 to here against Fredonia on the Laker turf. Isabella Lembo, such a threat with the ball in her hands, just not just being able to draw one defender, but able to draw two. The little give and go to Alexis Hill right there for her third goal of the season, first of this ball game. And it's just easy pickings like that to make it a 12-2 ball game. Isabella Lembo, now with I believe her seventh point of the ball game, just doing everything, doing it all for this Lakers squad. Lembo with five assists for the Lakers today, a team leading five assists, a team leading seventh point for Isabel Lembo as the Lakers lead by 10 with 6.15 remaining. That clock continues to run as is Quirk again on the draw against Jacobs. You haven't see, really seen Buchko in the faceoff circle as much as of lately. The ball is up and it's Goes back down before it's scooped right back up by Jacobs, and she comes in and looks to get by McCursher. She's pushed to the outsides. Surprised they didn't call that. Quirk got shaken up there. Looks like she got hit on the top of the head with the stick there. Surprised that wasn't Laker ball. Cockerell. Over for Brown. Brings it up to the point for Ventura. Ball goes down off a leg, and it's scooped right back up by Farino. As Fredonia will maintain possession. It's brought back across Vukosic, back over for Jacobs. Jacobs back down low for Cockerell. Co Cockerell looking to drive towards goal, pushed away by Townsend, and then next thing you know, Kiara McCursher decides to join in on the fun as well, but will draw the foul. It'll be an opportunity for Emma Cockerell. A little too much for McCursher there. We've been seeing a lot of that out of that. Uh, from her, this one. It's called for another free position there. It gives Fredonia a good opportunity. Cockrell on the right side. She'll drive towards goal before getting pushed away by Wiley. Got a shot off, but it goes high over the goal with 5.05 remaining here in this third quarter on WTOP 10. But it, it's brought back across by the most recent goal scorer, Alexis Hill. Fierro sends it near side, Noel Smith. Smith down the near side. Has a lot of space to work with for the Lakers. Smith leaves it off for Lembo now and brought over to the far side. McConnell, Wiley, back to the middle for Quirk and once more for Hill and once more after that for Fierro as the Lakers just constant circle rotation and just killing that clock away. But if an offensive opportunity poses themselves, they have been taking it. It's Lembo on the cutback. She looks to burn by Decola, but was unable to do so. And instead, Decola draws the foul, and it'll be a free position opportunity for Lembo looking for goal number three today. 
Isabella Lembo looking to drive towards goal, and she nets it through the five hole, a 13 to two lead for Oswego State. Lembo with her third goal today, her eighth point for her and the Lakers as they lead 13 to two with 405 remaining here in the third. Incredibly smart shot by there from Lembo there for her eighth point of the game, third goal of the game. Now she adds another hat trick to her career, but being able to shoot it quickly, you have two defenders, one on each side closing in on you. So if you go a little bit further to try and get closer to the goal, those defenders are going to sandwich you and probably cause a turnover, but being able to shoot it immediately pretty much as soon as you hear the whistle and shoot it low underneath car, great shot by Lembo there to make it a 13 ball 13 2 ball game was able to just squeak by and Oswego State just generating those offensive opportunities they haven't really taken their foot off the gas but a little eased up just a smidge as they lead by 11 here late in the third shots 23 to 4 in favor of Oswego State right here on WTOP 10 Thomas Turgeon and Luke Rosenthal with you as McConnell awaits to potentially scoop it up. Instead, Wiley takes it over. Wiley across for Fierro. The shot, and she buries it top left corner. Woo. My goodness. Wiley coming in with a full head of steam right there. Gets the ground ball for, to win the control there. Finds Fierro on a fast break. Nothing Carr could do there. There was no defender in sight to help her there. It was a two-on-one situation. Cela Wiley draws the defender, leaves Fierro wide open for a goal for another quick one. Catches them looking. It's Katie Fierro with her first goal on the day, her third point so far for number 18. Now her 16th goal of her career, her seventh goal so far this season as Fierro was able to just roof one top left corner over Emily Carr. Going to put Wiley here on faceoffs, <laughs> switching it up a little bit. She's doing everything, Turge, everything. A little improvisation. You might as well... Have at this point, you have a 12-goal lead. Might as well try up some things and improvise and see off some different things. As Wiley on the face off, and she sends it up in the air, looks to knock it down, but instead it's scooped right back up, though, by Buchko. And she's pressured by Wiley as well as Smith, and will get rid of it and dish it over for Jacobs. Or, gonna excuse give, me, Vukosic. Going to give Quirk a breather here. She sits on the sideline along Alexis Hill. Molly McGowan down the far side, and she gets pressured by McConnell. Noel Smith now finds the stick of Fierro, who's the most recent goal scorer for Oswego. Fierro, a one on four, looking to drive all the way in before the ball gets knocked out of her stick, but she scoops it right back up. Fierro looking to just get greedy with it, a one on four, and just go right for the goal. Might have been lucky to get the ball back there. Going out on one on four. As we see a couple substitutions now, Sadie Zemanik in the game now for the Lakers. Hasn't seen too much action. Only three games so far for the Binghamton, New York freshman. Zemanik across for Wiley. Back down low for Fierro. Finds the middle. McNally was looking to send one top left corner as well, but that one goes high over the goal. Lembo now with possession, a little bit of an iso now as Len Lembo looks to cut back and on the spin and wow, was that a beauty. Wow. Talk about an end one in lacrosse. I mean, she gets brought right to the ground there as she's falling. Spin gets the shot. This is the second, second time this game where she's got a spin a rooney shot for her fourth goal of the game, Isabella Lembo. Closing in on almost 10 points in the ballgame. That's just insane, Thomas. The juke and jive and the spin move leads to another goal for Isabella Lembo. A 15-2 lead as the clock dwindles away down the 15 seconds left here in the third quarter. And we'll be lucky if we get face-off in before the horn sounds. But wow, is that something, Isabella Lembo. The iso and the finish. Unbelievable. Number two. Because she got shut off there by de her defender. There wasn't much room for her to work with, and just that lethal spin move once again going at it. Defender can't do much there, especially when she's falling to the ground. You think it's going to be a lost cause. Nope. It goes right in between the goal, right in between the pipes there. Just what a performance. Oswego outscoring Fredonia 6-1 to one in that quarter, winning 9-3 to three in on the other hand, you look at the goaltender right now, Emily Carr. She's got 10 saves so far, but on the other hand, Oswego's offense is just madness 
so far here in this contest. It's tough for her to really be playing and being put in that position, especially on fast breaks when Oswego is coming at you. You know, you saw just a few possessions ago a two on one where Katie Fierro scored the goal. It's been a lot of that in this one here where to be quite honest, the defense just leaving her out to dry, that's what has led up 15 goals in this game. Can't put it all on her. Defense has been quite the problem for the Blue Devils so far in this one. Offensively, Oswego is with the best of them in the Suniac. Oswego dominant here in this th now three quarters going in the final fourth quarter. And Fredonia needs three goals at least to cut that running clock away and make it a stoppage time game. But right now I feel like it, they're fighting the clock, but it's a little too little too late for the Blue Devils. Might be. I don't know if you can necessarily score 13 goals in 15 minutes running clock for at least a little part of that. It's going to be tough. You're going to have to get some lucky breaks, some, some fast breaks, some turnovers, potentially some foul calls on Oswego's end. Might be too little too late, but you don't stop trying. you got to try and you know build some momentum going into your next game, get some offenses, maybe, maybe uh, run a play that you haven't really seen work out too much this season and see if it could work out in this one. Do something different to really gain some momentum heading into your next one. Oswego, on the other hand, they got a lot of momentum going into their next matchup against Geneseo, which will be a very good test for them. We haven't really seen the top teams in the Suniac face off against the Lakers so far early this season. You've gotten Fredonia team, who, you, like you mentioned, have won six in a row against the New Paltz. A little bit of the same fate, but you get Geneseo next Tuesday. And that'll be a good test for the Lakers as... The Knights have really had the better hand of Oswego State, winning the last five against the Lakers, and the Lakers looking for their first win since 2018. As the fourth quarter is underway, and it's grabbed right back up by Sydney Buchko with a little bit of speed and some tenacity and bringing it across to the offensive zone. It's Buchko dishing it across now once more for Culver. Back down low for Corrales. Corrales behind the Navkamide. Corrales on the cutback. Townsend watching that all day. It's back for Jacobs. Tries to leave one for Corrales, but instead it, the loose pass is picked up by Buchko. Back down low, Jacobs on the far side corner. Jacobs looking across now for Vakosik. Vakosik across now for Brown. Down low the near side for Culver. As it's Kaylin Corrales maintaining possession for the Blue Devils. 40 seconds remaining on the possession clock. Corrales behind the Nav Kamide looking for an option. It's grabbed back now, though, by Farino. Farino in the center. On the fake, looks to get by Quirk, but she wasn't allowing any of that to happen. Culver now looking to burn by Buscalia. And instead, it looks like there'll be a Free position opportunity for Fredonia on the far side. And Kircher showing a lot of frustration, not just right now, but really in this entire game. Playing a little bit aggressive at times leads to a free position here. The shot coming in, that one goes just wide, and it looks like Kamide got a stick on it, and the Lakers are able to maintain possession as Russian looks to clear, but instead runs right over the ball. And the Lakers will reset. Called there for a push. But it was Quirk again on that free position shot coming in out of nowhere. Randy Orton like almost from behind and gets a stick on it. Leads to a, a pass or a, a shot with not a lot of power behind it. Easy save for Kamad. Fierro looking to send one over for Buscalia, but instead it's picked up by McConnell and she gets it knocked out of her stick by Julie Culver. But McConnell will retain possession. 12.40 remaining. Lembo. Behind the net now for Smith. It's brought back to the far side now. Back for Smith down low. Smith looking to feed one out in front. And it was unable to do so as Carr was able to knock it down. 12.25 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Right here on WTOP 10. Thomas Turgeon and Luke Rosenthal with you. Here for some women's lacrosse action on a Wednesday afternoon here in the Port City. Turnover there by Smith leads to Fredonia, Fredonia possession. You could see 
the vision there. She wanted to get it in close quarters to her teammate, but you have three defenders right in front of you, one of them being Carr, who was able to just scoop it up and cause the turnover. Carr looking for streaking Vukosic, but instead Fierro was, or excuse me, Quirk was marking that. With 54 seconds remaining on the possession clock, Fedoni's going to have to move things up a little quickly. This, Carr is still looking for a pass. It's lane. unbelievable, Thomas. This is half of the possession clock right now that's gone, more than half at this point. It just credit to this Oswego defense. It's really just incredible to watch. She still has it with only 30 seconds left. It's been a full minute. Carr still looking for something, pushing her offense downfield a little bit more. We'll try and send it out, looking for the stick of Brown, and the ball will go down. A little bit of a collision there, and it, as Lembo will get up. I called that one on Audrey Brown. I don't know if I agree with that one. Looked like she might have just fell right on her own. She didn't have anything. She didn't touch her defender at all there. Call a Swigo possession nonetheless. And Wiley draws the foul once more as Oswego will move up the turf, and Shea McConnell will have it. We'll send it right up. For Quirk across for McNally. 10.50 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Quirk for McNally. Back across now for Lembo. And the near side is McConnell. And right back down low is Smith. Smith for Wiley. Seela Wiley rather quiet today on the offensive front. But still defensively Maya just the same. Wiley looking to drive towards goal. Let's one go and she picks the top right corner. The commentator's curse strikes again. It's Seela Wiley with her second goal of the contest. Now her fifth point in the game. We're going to need a Seela Wiley countdown graphic here in WTOP 10 because she's getting closer and closer to that 100-goal mark. want to make sure that we celebrate it accordingly, but it all was all set up right there by one Shea McConnell. Shea McConnell right there. She was in right to her right of Seela Wiley, is able to draw her defender to go inside with her and allow Wiley to just move in and uh, with open space. She passes by her defender as she usually does, not just in this game, but in any given game, and it's an easy goal for number five. The protection that she has on her stick to be able to pull it in near side, far side, near side, and then bring it back to the top right corner is just remarkable, and generating a lot of scoring points. And Oswego now up 14 goals here midway through the fourth quarter, 16 to 2. As the shots favor the Lakers, almost 26 to 4. Yeah, and you mentioned it's incredibly difficult for her to keep possession when she's doing those face dodges like that, especially in women's lacrosse because their pockets not as deep as the men's lacrosse sticks, but their pockets, so they don't get as much power behind their shots, but they also just, it's and harder Oswego, to control the ball. And Oswego will be back in action again against Genesio. We mentioned they played rather well today on the offensive side and defensive side, only allowing four shots on goal all game long against this Fredonia team. As McNally looks to scoop up the loose ball right around center field, and it's picked right back up by Wiley as she takes a stick closer to the face. Took a couple right there from two defenders. And we'll send it right back in. Wiley for Lembo. Oswego looking to just kill that clock away and just move the ball around. Be able to kill off as much clock as possible with 50 seconds remaining on the possession clock. 8.25 here in this fourth quarter. McConnell now for Lembo at the top. And Quirk will look to pose a screen as Lembo peels to the right. Lembo on the spin move looking to... Move something nifty as it's brought back up to the center. It's McNally behind the net now for Wiley. Cela Wiley looking to cut back towards middle. The backhand and what a finish. Cela Wiley making the comeback on goals and now has three today. Hits a 17-2 game and put on the brakes and the backhand finish and Cela Wiley Makes it a 15-point game. It's just unbelievable. Plays like that just can't help but have a smile on your face after that. Back to the goal, going with it. Shoots almost backwards with barely even an eye looking at her. The goalie right there. For her to get it top right of the goal, that's incredible. What a goal is. Now she has a hat trick in this one. Her goal number 26 for the senior. Cela Wiley getting the job done. As the Lakers are rolling here with 7.14 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 
My goodness, what a finish. We've seen a couple beauties today, and that one was nothing short of one as the backhand finish and the breaks as the Lakers lead dominantly by 15. Yeah, a few to put on your highlight reel from this one is Oswego out shooting for Donia shots on goal 26 to 4 now. Just dominant performance by the Lakers. Wiley, near side for McConnell, who we haven't really seen score as much here in this second half. Instead, it's been everyone else. It's been Lembo. It's been Wiley getting the rest. But McConnell still leading in goals, though, with five. She almost had an opportunity right there. She had an opportunity, but instead she'll go back to the near side as Lembo will send it low for Smith. Back for Wiley. Wiley for McConnell on the near side corner. Back up to the point for Quirk. Quirk will dish it over to the far side now. Fierro. Fierro looking to juke and jive, but nothing there. It's back to the middle for Lembo. Lembo for McConnell. Back down low for Wiley. McConnell cutting towards the center. McConnell for six. And it's stopped away. Another shot there by Hill, and that one goes wide. Really good sequence by Carr there. First the shot by McConnell. And that one will go, though, as Shea McConnell, it strikes again. It never, it never ends. Shea McConnell now with six goals and 18, goal, 18 goals for Oswego State's offense here today. And McConnell now with a third of them just shows how well this offense has performed. I spoke too soon there. That's an unfortunate sequence. Make that. She had back-to-back -back saves, and I was going to compliment her on that one. But then they find a wide-open Shea McConnell who cuts into the middle once again. The little pass behind the goal there. Not much you can do. She gets now, what, is that a double hat trick? There's too many hats in the crowd here, Turge. Nobody throwing them on the field like they do in hockey. A little bit disappointing. It's a little chilly. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. I guess so. Either way, the Lakers have been getting everything done today. It's Shea McConnell with six for Oswego State. 450 remaining here in this fourth quarter. As his quirk on the faceoff, sends it up in the air, and Smith with the collision leads to Wiley recovering the loose ball. Now Swiegel will keep possession. Quirk now, as they'll bring it into the offensive zone, 435 remaining. Lembo, down low for McConnell. Back up to the point for Quirk, and to the far side now is Hill. Fierro, back for Hill. Middle is Quirk. Cross now near side for McConnell. For Lembo as she looks to potentially create another juke and jive. I don't know what's in her back pocket. As she's been very crafty with the moves today. Right into the slot now looking for Quirk. She takes a chop Ooh. at it on the backhand and it just goes wide the goal of Carr. I don't, I don't know if anyone saw that until it went just wide. A close opportunity there for Quirk with 350 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Playing a little croquet there. That one almost went right in there. A little bit wide of the goal, but free position for her. As Oswego will keep possession, it looks like. And Julia Quirk will have a free position opportunity. And it looks like we're going to have a substitution as well. It looks like Katie Fierro will be going off. On that far side, we're going to have a substitution. See who's coming in. It looks like could be Lexi Levy on that far side. looks like as Quirk comes in, the shot that goes blocked. And it will be Lexi Levy in the game now for the Lakers. Also played on the women's hockey team this season. Dual sport athlete now bringing in and has played in four games this season. St. Louis, Missouri native. And she'll be in the lineup for the final three minutes, it looks like. Wiley looking across now. The backhand shot, and that one stopped by Carr on the opportunity by Lembo. Not the intended receiver there Wiley was looking for, but gets a good shot on goal nonetheless. Didn't quite go in. We see a couple substitutions now actually in the lineup as Ashley Casserly also in the lineup for the Lakers. We saw Alexi Levy in the lineup now for Oswego State. Sophia Mangino also in the lineup now for Oswego as Brett Howard being able to rotate a few 
of these players in the lineup for Oswego. As the foul is drawn there by Wiley, it'll be Buchko now with it. Sends it down low to the near side corner now for Cockrell. Corrales being pressured by Russian, and Corrales looking to go on the near side towards Kamai, but instead the miscue pass leads to the ball scooped up by Levy, bringing it down the far-hand side. Lexi Levy down the right-hand side, dishes it over for Noel Smith. Smith looking to drive towards goal, but instead will peel back behind the net for Lembo. Lembo sends it up for Casserly. Casserly across now for Wiley at the point. Wiley for Quirk and back once more across over for Hill with a minute 53 remaining as the Lakers will just eat a majority of this clock away. As it's Lembo now, or excuse me, Smith, as she was stick-checked and the ball came free, but Lembo will be able to have possession first for the Lakers. And sends it over for Smith with a minute 30. Smith for Lembo. Lembo looking to cut towards middle. Instead sends it far side for Wiley. Wiley scoops it up. A nice move there. The shot. And that one goes wide. Good save. That almost worked. And it absolutely should not have. Because that was not a great pass. Didn't get right to see the Wiley stick. Or she's able to make moves anyway and gets a goal. Good save by Carr. It was very chaotic but still almost got the job done as... There's another foul there on the Lakers. As Lembo gets up, Wiley will have the ball, but Lembo now will take possession of it. 50 seconds remaining here in this fourth quarter right here on WTOP 10. Lembo looking for point number 10 here with 45 seconds remaining. Isabella Lembo bringing it in, the shot, and that one goes in for goal number five for Lembo, point number 10. As the Lakers now lead 19 to 2. What a performance. And Suniak, I think we have an early candidate for Offensive Player of the Week because Isabella Lembo is doing it all from a free position, from the X. She's assisting, she's scoring, she's doing it all. What a performance to get that one bottom right, little bounce shot there behind Carr to make it a 19 to 2 ball game. And they're just going to let the clock run out. And this is ball game, Thomas. It will be in the Lakers. Improved to 7-2 and two on the season. On the other hand, Fredonia, they are now three straight losses in 0-2 in conference play to start off the year. It's Oswego State winning 19-2 to two against Fredonia here today at the Laker turf. And really just, Luke, we say it again and again, but I guess it never changed. Just the offensive performance by Oswego State. Little bit passive in that second quarter, but after that, it was just all cylinders. Third quarter, fourth quarter, and even early in the first quarter as well. Absolutely, and it came from just everybody, whether it was Isabella Lembo, or if it was Lembo passing to McConnell, or if it was McConnell passing to Wiley, or if it was Quirk. I mean, they had players scoring at all. They were firing on all cylinders for the 19-2 victory. Their second Suniac win in a row. They only had one instance of this last season where they won two Suniac games in a row. And to get that pretty early on in the season with a lot of Suniac games left to play, really important win for Oswego to get it done on their home turf. A huge win for the Lakers as they'll travel down to Geneseo next Tuesday. A really good test for them. But speaking of Geneseo, they had a very impressive performance today, 15-2, to a win against Buffalo State as we take a look around the Suniac in just a few short moments. New Paltz and Plattsburgh currently tied at 9-9. Cortland winning 23-6 to over Potsdam. And then Oswego, we mentioned here, getting the job done on all cylinders, 19-2. to is your final here from the Laker turf. Yeah, similar performances there from Oswego and Geneseo. So sort of a battle between two offensive juggernauts next week. Can't wait to watch that one as Geneseo comes off of a 15-2 win. Oswego with a 19-2 win. Both offenses should be exciting to watch next week. And one of the big talking points for Oswego tonight was Isabella Lembo getting 10 points for the Lakers tonight, 5-5 five and five makes 10. And number two in white got the job done 
on the assists and on the goals. Yeah, her and Shay McConnell just so many times back and forth to one another. She was able to find it. And that's what I think impresses me the most is just her vision to be able to come off of a, of a, of a screen and just pass it right back. I mean, credit to her teammates that are on the cut getting the ball on the receiving end. But for her to pass it almost perfectly every single time, quite the testament to the player that she is. And overall, this team you look at, overall, Oswego, playing very well to start off the season. Now, still perfect in the Suniac sitting at 2-0, and and they've done well in the regular season as a whole. Now 7-2, and and for Britt Howard, it's win number 48 going into look to snap a streak against the Geneseo Knights next Tuesday. Yeah, you talk about Cela Wiley inching closer to that 100 goal mark. She might hit it the same exact time Brett Howard hit, hits that 50 win mark. So it'll be interesting to see whether they could get it done in the next couple games here. But she's done such a great job improving this program year after year after year. And now this is really the culmination of it right now. They're off to a great hot start to start the 2023 season. Many teams starting off the season 2-0, and Oswego being one of them. Platt Pittsburgh now be, could potentially be another one. Geneseo now at 2-0. Cortland now at 2-0. As There's a lot of company at the top of the SUNYAC right now, and the Lakers getting the job done against Fredonia today. A lot of shots on goal, not a lot of shots against. No, not at all, and that's it starts with defenses on the clears. I mean, we saw it how many times in this game, Carr not being able to find a single person that gets wide open, not being able to clear it, taking minutes off of the possession clock, and it starts with that because you get the ball over half field, and what, do you have 20 seconds to shoot the ball? It's an incredible performance by the Lakers. It was an incredible performance, but Luke, overall, your final thoughts before we sail off into tonight in a Lakers victory. This was an important win for for us, we go to, you really want to take out for this and, and really continue this momentum heading into a, a team that you really haven't had their number in Geneseo in quite some time. So it's important for them to carry this offensive load, bring it into the next game. They had so many people contribute in this one. So it'll be interesting to see if they can get another one like this heading into the, their game against Jenny. We'll see where they move from here as they'll be on the road next Tuesday, but the men's team will be in action this Saturday as they face off against the Plattsburgh Cardinals at 1 p.m. But for now, the Lakers take the victory here today by a final score of 19-2 against the Fredonia Blue Devils. From Luke Rosenthal, I'm Thomas Turgeon, and all of our crew, we're saying have a great night and so long and sail on.